Good afternoon. For Prop Wash Video, I'm Werner Kopp, and the gentleman standing to my right is Brad Pillow. And we'd like to welcome you to Orange County, California, and the 1993 Scale Masters Championships. Brad, what do you think of the Masters so far? It's incredible, Werner. I've never seen anything like this. I've never been exposed to a meet of this caliber before, uh, other than the qualifiers in several places in the country. It's just fantastic. I, the, the quality of the workmanship, the planes. It's uh, incredible, it's isn't incredible. it? Incredible. Brad has kindly consented to operate camera two for prop wash video this year. Now I'll be operating camera one, and between the two of us, I think we'll give you complete coverage. So, from Orange County, California, at the 1993 Masters, stay tuned, and we'll be talking to you. Here's an aerial overview of Miles Square Park in Fountain Valley. The footage you're seeing was taken from an airborne camera with a transmitter mounted on Doug Crumley's bird dog. Mile Square Park has numerous facilities for all kinds of different hobbies and sports besides RC. And just to name a few, they've got a very nice control line facility. They have a free flight facility as well as windsurfing. And the flying site is a joint project between park administration and local RC modeling organizations. The organizations do most of the maintaining and upgrading. Well, we've landed and we're taxiing back in. And there's Brad Pillow. And in just a minute, you're going to see what it looked like from the other camera. Here we are, and under the right wing, that pod, that's the camera and transmitter. For those of you who are interested in airborne video systems, we have included Plane Talk's number for you at the end of this program, and you can call them for more information. Well, here's an overview of the pit areas as well as the spectators during this event. Over the four-day period, a total of over 5,000 people came to see these gorgeous aircraft fly. And here is a vendor area where you could find anything from videotapes to engines to kits. Anything related to model aviation was to be found here. A lineup of all the airplanes and some of the spectators early Friday morning. Brian O'Meara from Mile High Denver brought the Zero, which he built from a Burt Baker kit. It's powered by a Weber Bully and uses an Airtronic 1000 Infinity radio. Unfortunately, Brian developed gear problems with the lockdown mechanism and was only able to complete the first round.
This is Chuck Fuller's new Byron RV4. Chuck comes from Atascadera, California, and for a number of years now has received the Gray Eagle Award at the Masters due to his being the oldest contestant. Don't worry, Chuck, we won't tell him how old you really are. The plane weighs 25 pounds and is powered by a Zenoa 3.7. This model is based on David Anders Oshkosh Grand Champion, and the radio control is provided by Airtronics. That's one of the nicest loops we've seen in quite a while. An overshoot. And here comes the landing. Wow, right on the line, Chuck. Very nice, Mr. Chuck Fuller. This is Nick Zeroli Jr. scratch-built Grumman F6F Hellcat. It's the prototype of a new design by Nick's famous father, Nicky Sr. One of the unique mechanical features of this aircraft is a scale landing gear that pivots 90 degrees during retraction. And here we are, ready to go out to the flight line. Start up. First time. Pretty good, Nicky. And the run-up. And taxiing out for takeoff, and here's the takeoff. Now keep your eyes on the gear. And in case you missed that, here's the retraction a little closer and in slow motion. At 48 pounds, this is the heaviest entry in this year's Masters. An 85cc Sox engine powers this 96-inch span fighter. Nicky uses an Airtronics Vision Radio. And another landing right on the line. This is a second scale masters for Eduardo Estevez's rear wind Sky Ranger. Eduardo comes from Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Unfortunately, the aircraft ran into a fence and broke the leading edge of the wing during the fourth round. The resulting score caused Eduardo to lose some valuable points. I should mention, however, that the plane was repaired and competed again in the fifth round. Eduardo placed 24th overall. The rear wing is based on a Sid Morgan design, weighs 26 pounds, and it's powered by an OS Gemini 300. The wing spans 109 inches. This is Andy Geetz from Germany, and uh, I believe the last time we spoke to you was in 1990, wasn't it, at QSAA? And a lot has happened to you since 1990. You're, you're manufacturing your own line of kits? Yes. And uh, quite successful, I understand. Uh, we've just got three examples behind us, or in front of us and behind us, and uh, you're marketing them in the United States now. I try to market this uh, in the United States uh, through Desert Aircraft, Dave Johnson's Desert Aircraft in Tucson, Arizona. 
Uh, in Germany, uh, the business is quite good with these uh, uh, exclusive, uh, little bit expensive models because they are very highly prefabricated and you don't have much work to build them up. And so someone who has not too much time to build uh, can also fly very, very scale and nice aeroplanes. How many kits are you marketing in the United States? How many? Yes, it's a DC-3, it's a Spitfire and the Yak-11. And the, Spit, uh, the DC-3 and the Yak-11 are already in stock. And the Spitfire is the newest one, so maybe there's uh, uh, several weeks of delivery time. I see. I see. Well, one of the things that uh, really impressed us about your flying is that everything you fly is so quiet. We yeah. understand that the uh, Yak is powered by the Seidel 9-cylinder? Yes, that's right. And is there anything you've done to, to make it so quiet besides the cowling? No, it's, uh, uh, this engine is not the, the very powerful engine out of the, uh, the 100 cc it has. So it's not difficult to make it quiet. Uh, it's only uh, the ring exhaust, the, the, the ring exhaust uh, you, you get with the engine. And that's it? That's it. That's an impressive engine. Uh, and how about the, uh, the Spitfire? That's the one I think that as far as quietness impressed everyone here. The Spitfire has a two-cylinder engine, uh, so this is also quieter than uh, one than a single cylinder because it runs nearly without vibration, and uh, it has a carbon fiber tune pipe in it. This carbon fiber tune pipe uh, has all already a silencer in it, so uh, this model is uh, very quiet. And I understand, in part, quiet uh, models are a way of life in Germany. It, it, it's it's by law, you know, the engines have to be quiet, do they not? Yes, they do, but not as quiet as they are. So this is very, these models are very, very quiet also in Germany. Not only do the airplanes look good and they're quiet, but you fly them very well. Thank you very much, Andy. You're welcome. Here's a closer look at some of the rivet and panel detailing on the Spitfire. And an airplane level taxi shot. Taking off. And a fast flyby. I should mention that the flight footage you're looking at was taken during a demonstration flight and Andy certainly wowed the crowd. believe the sound of that engine or maybe I should say the quietness of that engine and a smooth landing and taxiing back Mr. Andy Geets From a Burt Baker kit, this is Chuck Collier's P-47 Thunderbolt. Chuck comes from Phoenix and qualified at Mesa this year. The Jug weighs 28 pounds and has an 80-inch wingspan. It's powered by a Zenoa 62. The markings are for Lieutenant Frank Clibby's Little Chief, which served in the 56th Fighter Group in World War II. We were privileged to sit next to Chuck and his lovely wife at the banquet and have to tell you that Chuck has a great sense of humor and kept us all well entertained. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Very nice landing.
Lauren Pearson from Minnesota is the pilot of this one-third scale week special which he built from an ACE kit. This model weighs 24 pounds and is powered by a Zenoa G62. Lauren placed 37. Here's a noontime demo starring Peter Pumpkin. The helicopter is being flown by Dan Engelhoff with his son providing the storyline. Since the Masters was held close to Halloween, everyone enjoyed seeing the flying pumpkin. How's this for coordination? This is not something we'd recommend you try the next time you go flying. And here's Gene Barton's Sky Raider. Gene has been campaigning this beautiful aircraft since 1990. It was built from a Rick Lewis kit and is powered by a Weber Bully. Some of the features are folding wings, closing canopy, bomb drop, extending tail hook, flaps, and retracts. Gene says that this will be the last year for the Sky Raider, although he didn't say what the new airplane will be. Whatever it is, we know it's going to be spectacular. Gene placed third this year and was voted the most improved pilot at the Masters. And here's a rock steady takeoff, followed by a flyby. Diego Lopez to the announcing stand, please. And the bomb drop. Takes a while for the bomb to reach the ground at slow motion. And it's a direct hit. And the landing, and boy, at 40 pounds, they tend to stay down once they're planted, don't they? This is Greg Ernst's Laser 200. Greg comes from Oregon and built this one-third scale model from a precision built kit. It's powered with a 32cc four-cylinder OS Pegasus engine. The weight is 19 pounds and the span is 101 inches. Greg says his model is cowled and baffled just like the full scale and that even with the limited exit area, the motor cools properly. Greg finished in 28th place. Diego Lopez. Diego is the contest director this year. And not, not only that, you're also a contestant. Yeah, first time, I think. <laughs> yeah, oh, come on. You're a, you've been a busy guy this weekend. What do you think about trying to put something like this together? It's very hard. I don't recommend to anybody. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I know you've been planning for what, about better part of a year for this yeah, one? About six months. Six when months. You told me that I could have it and we could have it in California. So six months is really a short time to get something like that going. But, uh, I think we've successfully done it. How long uh, you figure it's going to take for the cleanup and uh, everything to 
to where you can forget about this year's Masters? Probably another six months. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Diego Lopez. Dennis Welty from Boring, Oregon built this Newport 28 from a Proctor kit. It weighs in at 15 pounds and is powered by a YS-120. The aircraft is marked for First Lieutenant Kenneth Porter, Blue Squad Leader of the 147th Squadron. Dennis flies this model with a Futaba 7 UAFS radio and plays 17th in this year's Masters. speed are your game, here's an unlimited P-51 that has both. It's been clocked at 162 miles per hour and is powered by a Bill Van Leeuwen four-cycle custom-built racing engine. It's being flown today by Diego Lopez. No time wasted getting off the ground. And up on the wing tip around the pylon, realizing of course it weighs about 30 some pounds. There's an interesting story behind this 51. It was originally built without flaps and was a real challenge to land without having it run off the end of the runway. As you can see, it now has flaps and is quite controllable. Nice job, Diego. Terry Nitch, master jet jockey from Columbus, Ohio, and last year's Mr. Scale Masters is flying this North American F-86 Sabre. Terry's model weighs 13 and a half pounds, has a 58 inch wingspan, and is powered by a 91 BVM engine. In addition to second place at this year's Masters, this model won first at the 1993 Toledo Exposition, first at the expert scale of the 1993 Nationals, and second place at Top Gun. A level flyby, very steady, Terry. And the tank drop. It's easy to see, isn't it, why Terry consistently scores in the top three. And here's a quick look at the crowd that attended on Saturday. As you can see, there it just is a tremendous amount of interest in scale. The secret to getting this kind of public participation for your event is in media involvement. The Scale Masters Committee successfully involved both newspapers and television news to get the word out, and obviously, they succeeded. Greg Singleton from Riverside, California, scratch built this Hawker Tempest from Bob Holman Plans. This beautiful aircraft is all built up construction and is finished with epoxy and glass over a balsa skin. 
It weighs 22 pounds, has a 77-inch wingspan, and is powered by an OS35CC two-cycle engine. The colors were achieved by hand mixing K and B epoxy to match FTE color chips. And here's the takeoff. A loop. Flyby. And the landing. Very nice job, Greg. This P-38 is being flown for demo flight by Mr. Carl Lindu from Southern California. A beautiful one-fifth scale KI-84 built by Ken Safer from Don Smith Plans. At 33 pounds, this is a heavy airplane. It's powered by an A&M 4.2 gas engine and uses Don Smith cowl and canopy as well as Gene Barton retracts. The guidance system is an Airtronic Spectra radio. Here's Lee Rice from North Richland Hills, Texas, working on his F-104G. The plane is scratch-built and uses an OS-91 for power. You probably remember that Lee couldn't get this bird airborne at Top Gun due to the grass surface. As you're about to see, this just wasn't the case at the Masters. It almost leaped into the air. Lee finished in eighth place. This airplane certainly flies well for having so small a wing surface. The handsome gentleman next to me is Charlie Nelson, who finished last uh, Scale Masters in second place. Charlie, you're, we finished round three at this point. What's it look like? Well, at the end of uh, round one, uh, I was in sixth place, and I slipped back to tenth place. And I didn't get quite as good a score as I thought I might have on the third flight, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, my aiming point, as usual, is the tenth place trophy, and I'd be quite satisfied if I placed somewhere around tenth. Uh, is the plane flying well for you this year? Uh, the plane has been giving me a little bit of uh, a problem. We had some sort of a, or had uh, some sort of a landing gear misalignment which was causing some very, very low scores on takeoffs and landings. And I think with a, a couple of hammers and a crowbar, I think maybe we've got it straightened around good enough so that uh, <laughs> we can get a half decent takeoff and landing out of it now. Well, that's good. Charlie, best of luck in the next two rounds. From Berlin, Massachusetts, Mr. Charlie Nelson. Thank you very much, Warner. This is a model of the last Waco cabin built at the Waco factory. Charlie's plane features an upholstered interior, mid-cord speed brake type flaps, operational anti-collision beacon, position lights, and retractable landing lights. The power plant on this Waco is an OS Surpass 91 four-cycle. The model weighs 16 pounds and has a 76.4 inch wingspan. And here is that landing gear induced yaw that Charlie was telling you about during the interview. And that certainly did cost him some points. 
Charlie's got a new Waco cabin, slightly larger, powered by a new Seidel nine-cylinder radial engine that will probably be flying sometime next year. We're looking forward to seeing that one, Charlie. Dave Lovett of Willits, California is flying this 96-inch Northrop Gamma. Dave's Gamma is modeled after Lincoln Ellsworth's Polar Star, which is in the National Air and Space Museum. Power is a 26cc four-cylinder OS engine. The model features park bench style ailerons, flaps, navigation, and landing lights. Certainly is an unusual subject, isn't it? And here's Dennis Crook's first place Lear 35. After a two-year absence from active competition, Dennis has returned with a winner. The plane is constructed of fiberglass, weighs 27 pounds, and has an 80-inch wingspan. It's powered by two OS Max 77s and sports an array of special features. And here's a look into the passenger compartment. And there's the co-pilot and the pilot. Starting up the left engine. And taxi. Listen to those two 77s wind out. Very nice takeoff. Landing gear retracting. There's Dennis and his lovely wife Linda who calls for him. And taxiing back. Nice flight, Dennis. <laughs> Paul Curley from Los Angeles entered this FW-190 built from a Bob Holman kit. This aircraft is a seasoned veteran having competed in four masters. It weighs in at 24 pounds, has an 80-inch wingspan, and is powered by a Bully 2.0 engine. Almost ran off the side there. A Volte BT-13, 
The BT stands for basic trainer and the full-size version was affectionately called the vibrator because of its tendency for transmitting engine vibration to the cockpit. This BT-13 is being flown by Larry Sutherland from Fresno, California. It was built from a Burt Baker kit and has a fiberglass fuselage with foam wings. Larry's model weighs 24 pounds and is powered by a Zenoa G38 gas engine. master builder you've done it again this year uh, I want to say great shades of valen cord but I know better so can you tell us a little bit about your newer aircraft well you have to give some some credit to Roy because at last year's master I saw his airplane and uh, but that's a nice subject I really like that airplane and I liked it particularly because I needed an airplane that was similar to my bird dog for a practice plane and one with similar characteristics and mm -hmm. so well I think I'll build that airplane mm-hmm so I talked to Roy and I got got his plans and some of his parts and things and started taking a look at it and you know well maybe I'll maybe I'll make it a contest airplane too and uh, but then I found a subject that I like and it wasn't even close to Roy's airplane so yeah, yeah. it ended up being a major rework project but I did start from Roy's plans and use some of his parts and uh, but it ended up as you can see it's a, tri a completely different version yes it is and um, I've uh, done some other things to it to you know to, to change uh, br the scale outline to bring mm -hmm. it, uh, make it more correct. But uh, it's uh, the same configuration, an L5. This is an E model, and the owner of this aircraft uh, lives in Sevierville, Tennessee. And uh, I've found pictures of this aircraft, and fortunately, as it worked out after I had him uh, got in contact with him, he was in the process of having it restored, restored. again. And he had it repainted uh, this January, but uh, he finished all of his in Stitz uh, polytone uh, finishes, and uh, so I got all of his his Stitz numbers mm -hmm. and used the same paint on this. And that's the first my ex first experience with Stitz paints, and just fell in love with the process. It, it worked out well. I've for used you. dope before, and this is just so much better than than dope. Doug, for some of our viewers who may be interested in a project like this, who've never tackled anything this complex, but how much of your life is in this airplane? I started at uh, about Thanksgiving, uh, see, over the holiday season last year, mm -hmm. and uh, I had it flying uh, um, about six or seven months later, I think. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of it, a lot of it depends on the experience. But if yeah. you if you wanted to build uh, this airplane pretty much as plans uh, most people should be able to complete one in in six months to a year I would think depending on the, the, the level of of, of uh, experience and uh, how desperate you are to get it done <laughs> and, how, and how understanding the wife is yeah that's always important isn't it yeah uh, Doug and as a final uh, topic of discussion let's talk a little bit about all the vital statistics of yeah. this airplane well, it's it's uh, quarter scale, the exact quarter scale mm -hmm. of the Stinson L5. Uh, the wingspan's 102 inches. This one weighs out, I think, uh, the last one was about 27, 28 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm powering it with an Enya 240 V twin, uh, running inverted, and uh, backing that up with a McDaniel's uh, onboard glow system, multi-cylinder glow system. I uh, found that in the inverted mode, this engine almost needs to have continuous glow on yeah, it to, yeah, yeah. to, to uh, operate favorably. So that's worked well for you. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I put 32-ounce tank in this one uh, based on my experience with the, the OS Pegasus in the in the Bird Dog because that was giving me about 12-minute uh, uh, competitive time mm -hmm. with a 28-ounce tank. Right. So, but this one is a much uh, leaner engine. It's, it's not nearly as thirsty for some reason, so I've got about almost 30 minutes of flying time. Wow. 
radio equipment, uh, Airtronics Vision. And How many channels are you using? Uh, I think I'm using using up six channels. I've, there's uh, let's see how many servos. There's four servos in the wing, uh, three in the t in the tail, and uh, the, the throttle servo. So uh, it takes a lot of channels uh, for the wing for the aileron flap function because it uh, you have to have a channel for each aileron right. plus a channel for the flaps to perform the mixing functions to get the droop. The droop aileron. It looks great on the ground and it looks superb in the air. Thank you very much and Thank best of luck. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Here's the takeoff. Well, that's certainly stalled performance, isn't it? Slow down, flaps down, down and dirty flyby. Smooth landing. Doug finished 13th at the Masters this year. And here's a complex subject. This is Dave Sawatsky's DHC-6 Twin Otter. Unfortunately, Dave lost this beautiful aircraft during the third round. We don't know if he's going to rebuild it or not. The scratch-built Otter is powered by two OS-46 two-cycle engines. Construction is conventional built up. One of the unique features of this aircraft is the flap system. The inboard flaps are conventional, while the ailerons are designed to droop during flap deployment. At 20 degrees flaps, the ailerons droop 10 degrees. The aircraft is also equipped with navigation and landing lights, functional mechanical brakes, and fully operational doors. Dave covered the Otter with one mil thick aeroplastic with all rivet detailing punched in before application of the material to the airframe. And there you can see both the flaps and the drooping ailerons. The gentleman on my right is Mr. Carl Lindu. Carl, first of all, where are you from? from Riverside, California. Riverside, so you're a local boy. Local boy's right. And is this your first scale masters? First one, yep. First ever. Where'd you qualify? Qualified here. Right here at Mile Square. Yep. Well, Carl, you've got a uh, Proctor Albatross. Yeah. And uh, one of the thing I think we want to talk about a little bit is a beautiful wood finish that you accomplished. Uh, last year we spoke with uh, Tom Polapink and how he achieved his with antiquing. How did you uh, do yours? It is all natural wood as I can see. Now, my fuselage is all 1 64th inch plywood. Each, each um, panel line is individually cut and lapped and sanded and we glued each one down with a little bit of backing and we put the next one down and we did a light sand job and then when we finished it we took clear dope and a little bit of mahogany stain and just a tad bit of yellow uh, aerogloss dope mixed it together and we put 15 coats of that on there to, to arrive at that finish. Carl it's a very impressive finish and this Thank being you. your first master especially we wish you best of luck and uh, hope you come out in the top 10. Well, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but we'll get there. You're working at it. Yeah, working on it. Mr. Carl Lindu from Riverside, California. Thank you very much, Carl. Thank you. The Albatross is powered by a Super Tiger 3000. It weighs 21 pounds and is flown with an Airtronics radio. Carl is a member of the Corona RC Club and the California Air Show team. He finished in 26th place.
something wrong with you. This is Kent Nogi's F86F, which he built from a Bob Violet Models kit. It's marked for the Sky Blazers, which was an aerobatic show team during the 50s. Like Terry Nitsch's F86, this one weighs in at 13 and a half pounds, but is powered by an 81. Kent is normally in the top 10, but this year he had some problems in the fourth round and as a result placed in 11. Very smooth roll. Nice approach. Rock steady. And a perfect landing. And here's one of our favorites, a giant sop with pup built from a modified Balsa USA kit by Doug McIntyre from Eugene, Oregon. The wings span an enormous nine feet and the flying weight is 35 pounds. Adding to the realism of this aircraft is a Technopower nine cylinder radial engine. The covering is cover right, finished with Chevron Perfect paint. The full size pup was the first aircraft ever to make a carrier landing. Watch this touch and go. Isn't that just beautiful? Touch down for a minute and right back into the air. Another look at the crowd on Saturday. Kent Nogi and Terry Nitsch are demonstrating the Turbo Viper. This jet is powered by the revolutionary French JPX engine, which is a true jet using propane as fuel. Kent Nogi in the red shirt. And here we are signaling that we're ready. And starting up the aircraft. That's air they're using to get the turbines going. Putting everything back on the airplane and carrying it out. Here we go. Turbo jet power. Listen to that engine. Isn't that just incredible? Straight up. About 220 miles an hour right there. And it flies well at slow speed, too. Here's another fast flyby. And we had a mishap during the landing. However, it's not as bad as it looks, and uh, it is repairable. Bob Olson, 
Olson from Newport Beach, California is campaigning this Curtis SB2C Helldiver designed by Burt Baker. As you're about to see, Bob was plagued by landing gear problems most of the weekend and try as he might, he just couldn't get the bugs worked out. Here you see him trying to shake the right gear down. Better luck next year, Bob. This is the DC-3 designed and kitted by Andy Geetz from West Germany. Andy put on several crowd-pleasing performances with this beautiful aircraft. The kit is available from Desert Aircraft. There's the takeoff, slightly to the right of the runway. A very smooth aircraft. And look at this low flyby. You think he could go much lower? This young man certainly knows how to fly, doesn't he? And the landing. From West Germany, Mr. Andy Geetz. This one-third scale Fokker D7 is being flown by Nick Tusa from East Mauritius, New York. The plane was scratch built by Nick using all handmade parts including wheels, machine guns and dummy engine. The wings span 10 feet and the aircraft weighs 40 pounds. The power plant is a Quadra 100. Incidentally, this is not the same D7 that Nick has been flying since 1990. This is a brand new plane with special modifications to allow it to be broken down to fit into a small enough container to be taken along as baggage on airline flights. And here's the landing. History. What was the name? A beautiful F-14 built from a yellow aircraft kit by Shalish Patel from Eureka, California. Over the years, Shalish has become quite an expert on multi-engine ducted fan installations. This particular aircraft is powered by two OS-91 engines, has operating swing wings as well as flaps, retracts, and a canopy that opens up. Here's Shalish demonstrating the wings and the canopy for us. As you can see, it takes quite a crew to get this big bird started. And a complex radio system. Buttoning everything down and carrying the F-14 out to the flight line. Incidentally, for those of you not familiar with ducted fans, 
that what you probably think is smoke is actually an oil mist. It takes a lot of oil to keep these engines lubricated. Taxiing out and the takeoff. Gear retraction. And a fast flyby. And here's Shalish folding the wings back. Another low flyby. A roll. Again, demonstrating the folding wings. Four-point roll and the landing. Right on the money. And there is a canopy opening so the pilot can get some fresh air. Bob Rosenloff from Garden Grove, California, built this Zero from a Burt Baker kit. The model has 103 flights on it and is powered by a Webra Bully. This should redefine the expression, excess thrust horsepower. You're watching an aerobatic demo put on by Mr. Jerry Kitchen. Jerry builds these extra 300s from Goldberg kits, sets them up, test flies them, and sells them as ready to fly. So if you want a hot performer, give Jerry a call. And right up into the hover. And torque roll. See, it does not come apart. And the safety net. Hey. Ed Terry from Decatur, Alabama brought this Piper L4 bird dog. Built from a highly modified Balsa USA kit, the L4 has a 9-foot wingspan and weighs a mere 17 and a half pounds. It's powered by an OS-160 four-stroke twin. Ed finished in 35th place. This is Bob Fry, and first of all, Bob, where are you from? Well, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm originally from Syracuse, New York. Okay. Bob, and uh, what we're going to talk about today is small airplanes. And in, in this day of giant scale, I think you've got the smallest aircraft at the Masters, a very nice uh, rendition of a C-47. How come small? Well, you know, Warner, I've been doing this for many, many years. Yeah. In fact, I did this when, uh, when the size airplane I'm using now was really uh, average or maybe even a little large. Um, and uh, like I said, I've done it for a number of years. I've done very well, and now I'm kind of on a mission from God, <laughs> as the Blues Brothers say. And I'm trying to prove that people don't necessarily have to have museum pieces and great huge airplanes with lots of money invested in them to come here and compete with the guys and have a good time. And score well. Well, I'm not scoring quite as well, but as you know, I've, <laughs> I've done good some years and not so good other years, but I'm flying, I'm not smashing the thing up, that's what counts. Well, let's talk a little bit about your airplane. Uh, first of all, is it scratch or was it a kitten? It's, it's really kind of a, 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 a half breed. It's, it's based on a top flight kit, which is not available anymore, although I hear there's another one coming out. And what I did is I traced the outline of the airplane, changed the wing all around, basically redrew my own plans and, and built my own airplane. And, uh, but the airplane is doing double duty. It's originally planned and built for the mini Reno Warbird races, which is a pylon race. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's, it scoots. And in the races, it does pretty well. But like I said, I didn't have anything 
uh, uh, bigger or better to bring to the Masters, so it's doing double duty this weekend. From Phoenix, Arizona, Mr. Bob Fry. Bob, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Werner. Good luck to you. Having a good time. Having a real good time. Have been here all day? Yep. Yep. And which airplane do you like best of all of them that I you like saw? I like the uh, F-86. F-86. Terry's, yeah. It's a nice airplane. Uh, Flies Terry nice. Niches. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a mm -hmm. gorgeous airplane. You going to yep. be back tomorrow? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. All good right. time. We're having a great time. You're having a great time. You've you been bet. here all day? Uh, we just got here a little while ago. Now, you're not modelers. No, but no. we came to watch the, uh, the planes flying Isn't around. Isn't this so incredible? It's really fun. What? No. Not a modeler. How'd you hear about this? Oh, we come down every once in a while just to watch them. Just to watch them? Yeah. Huh? What do you think of these airplanes? It's Aren't they great. incredible? Love the scale. Uh, you got any favorites that you saw today? He does. Uh, which one do you like? Uh, Talking to the mic. Uh, F-86. The F-86. <laughs> I think everybody likes the F-86. Well, you guys enjoy yourself. Brian. Brian what? Booth. And where are you from, Brian? Um... You can't remember where you're from? Margarita. San Margarita. You having a good time? Yeah. And which airplane do you like? Um, oh. hmm. I'm not sure. You're not, like, what's your names? Oh, John and Renee. John and Renee, where are you from? Huntington Beach. Oh. Huntington Beach. You having a good time? Yeah. Great got, time. Got any favorite airplanes here? I like, I like the big the biplane. <laughs> oh, big she like she liked the one that just went down over there. <laughs> went down? Yeah. Oh, I guess. No, it just, just landed. Just Are you having a good time? Oh, <laughs> wonderful time. You're having a wonderful time. Oh, which wonderful. airplane do you like best? <laughs> All of them. All of them. Now, that's the kind of there ain't a dog you. out there, believe me. No, that's the truth, isn't it? And here's Bob Fry's partner from Arizona, Al Casey, flying his veteran MiG-3. This MiG-3 is the oldest plane flown at the Masters. It's made every Masters since 1985, with the exception of 89 and 92. The 72-inch model is powered by an OS-60 and weighs 12 pounds. It features retracts and segmented split flaps. Al finished in 14th place. Tom Polapink from Center Ridge, New York, scratch built this beautiful sop with snipe. At age 28, Tom is one of the younger contestants in the Masters. The model is powered by a Quadra 35, weighs 25 pounds, and has an 84 inch wingspan. It's modeled after a restored snipe currently in the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Tom finished in sixth place. This A6M3 Model 320 was built from Dave Platt plans by Jeff Foley of Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. 
Construction is built up with an 80 inch wingspan and 18 pound flying weight. The color scheme is modeled after a subject found on New Guinea in the late 1942. The Japanese presentation markings on the side of the aircraft indicate that it was purchased by a patriotic group and presented to the Navy. This model is two years old and has approximately 200 flights on it. It placed sixth in last year's Masters as well as in the top 10 in both 92 and 93 Top Gun. We don't know who owns this Jenny, which was flown on Thursday during flight practice. With a beautiful finish, however, it would have static judged well had it been entered. Lenny again. Okay. Going into the fifth round, are you excited? You know you're in the top three. Uh, I'm excited, nervous, tired. <laughs> Another day on this asphalt, I think I'd be over with. Well, yeah, you've, I... been, you've been flying very well this weekend. That uh, Lear has just been rock steady for you. Um, thank you, Warner. Um, a little bit of preparation and a great deal of luck, and uh, we might be able to pull this thing off. It would be real, well, let me put it another way. Uh, the first goal, of course, is take the airplane home. Uh, kind of like to be in the top five. Uh, if that doesn't happen, well, so be it. But uh, just try not to break the airplane. You know, we've been we've been uh, working at this Masters game for for quite some time. Uh, took a few years off, uh, not necessarily by choice. Didn't have an airplane. This is the first year we've been back to the Masters in oh, I would guess maybe six years or so. And uh, things are going fairly well for us. And uh, you're not nervous at all? Um, right now, no, because I know I've probably got 45 minutes or so before I have to fly again. So uh, we don't want to talk to you 10 minutes before you go to fly. Huh? Nobody wants to talk to me <laughs> 10 minutes before I fly. <laughs> you won the Masters last year, and we've completed four rounds at this point. How are you doing? Uh, right now, we're sitting in second place. Second uh, place. Yeah. Dennis putting a heck of a charge on up top, and we're trying to catch him, but he's real, real tough this week. Is it close? No, oh, within a couple points, yeah. Uh, yeah. Feel like you've got a good shot at it? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna make best effort we can. Let's now, as it stands at the end of the fourth round, I think you're in the top three, aren't you? They won't even help you clean up I'm not counting. Team. You're not counting, yeah. but you're keeping your fingers crossed. Oh yeah. Yeah. We could always do a, a 99 and a half or something, maybe the last <laughs> round. And nudge, nudge, Mr. Crooks out. Well. This is Randy Hansen from Astoria, Oregon. Randy, we know it's a Newport 11. Uh, obviously, it's in a somewhat unusual color scheme for a Newport 11. How come? Well, it was captured by uh, Lieutenant Gustav Leffers in 1918 and, um, and uh, done up in his own colors that he liked, apparently. Uh, that's a rarity, right? That's extremely rare. Uh, actually, they were, uh, there were several built as, as uh, something else but uh, used off the Newport 11 design. Uh, how uh, does one go about getting documentation for something like this? Well, it's very difficult. There's very few of these around. I obtained some through uh, Ray Rimmel. Uh, he has Albatross Productions and in England. Now, Winsock Data Files magazines you've probably nice seen. Uh, there's, that's where I found mine. There's not much available. Here we go. Right to left. From Astoria, Oregon, yeah, Mr. Track. Randy Hansen. Thanks a lot, Randy. Thank you much. Randy built the new Port 11 from a Proctor kit and powered it with an OS Surpass 70.
Also from a Proctor kit, this Albatross DVA is being flown by Mike Brewer from Astoria, Oregon. The plane is three years old and has over a hundred flights on it. The finish is automotive lacquer. Mike says that the scale engine has lots of handmade parts and detail work above and beyond the contents of the kit. His static score certainly reflected all this attention to detail. This Sky Raider belongs to Diego Lopez. There's been quite a bit of friendly rivalry going on between Gene Barton, who of course also flies the Sky Raider, and Diego as to whose plane is lighter. Anyway, the official stats indicate that Diego's Sky Raider weighs 38 pounds while Gene's tips a scale at 40. Both planes were built from Rick Lewis designs. This A1H is powered by a 35cc Weber Bully two-cycle engine. Diego finished in fifth place. And here's the takeoff. And the bomb drop. Fast flyby. Overshoot. Thank you, Diego. And the landing. It's easy to see why Diego scores as well as he does. And here's Andy Geetz's Yak-11. Look at that landing gear. Look at that finish. What a beautiful airplane. Ground level taxi shot by Mr. Dick Hansen. A low inverted flyby. Can he go any lower? Yes, he can go lower. Andy, you're incredible. And a landing with authority, Mr. Andy Geese. Andy Geese, now Germany with the side L nine cylinder distributed by.
Ted Newman from Fort Worth, Texas, fielded the 16-pound quarter-scale Newport 28, which was built from a Proctor kit. The airplane has an 80-inch wingspan and is powered by an OS Max 108 two-stroke. The markings are for one of the 12 Newports bought by the U.S. Navy and used for testing water landings with inflatable bags. This AT-6 was part of the noontime show and is being flown by Dennis Crooks. It's powered by a Bob Walker radial engine and as you can see for yourself, it's quite a performer. You'll probably remember this F4D1 Sky Ray from Top Gun. It's being flown by Bob Boswell from Hamburg, New Jersey. Bob built the Sky Ray from a Mark Frankel designed semi kit. It weighs 18 pounds and has a wingspan of 58 and one half inches. The power plant is an OS91 turning a Ramtech impeller. This model utilizes a total of 14 servos. Six of these operate the retracts and sequencing gear doors. Sequencing is accomplished through the use of a small computer and eight micro switches. Since this is not a common modeling subject, the retracts and struts had to be scratch built. And what can be said about this beautiful Albatross DVA that hasn't been said before? This is being flown by our good friend Dick Hansen and was a prototype for the Proctor Albatross kit. It weighs in at 23 pounds, slightly heavier than Mike Brewer's Albatross, mainly because of the engine, an Enya VT-240 four-stroke. Dick placed 15th in this year's Masters. Ouch, that's a little hard on the wing. Very quiet. Sir. Nice dead sick landing, Dick. Eugene Job from Santa Rosa, California brought this Burt Baker Design Zero. The model features a fiberglass fuselage and foam wings. The plane is modeled and painted after the Zero in the Planes of Fame Air Museum in Chino as it appeared in 1978. Gene Zero features flaps, retracts with oleo struts, an onboard glow system, two receivers, and 11 servos. To date, it has about 70 flights on it. Gene finished in ninth place.
And here's another one of those aircraft that the closer you look, the more you see. This is Jim Pendergrass's J3 Cub, which he built from a pilot kit. It weighs 17 pounds and has a 105 inch wingspan. It's powered by an Enya 124 stroke. Jim finished in 18th place. Don't you just want to climb into there? Unanimous. All F 86s entered in the 1993 Scale Masters were constructed from Bob Violet kits, including this beauty being flown by Carl Hibbs from Puyallup, Washington. Carl's F 86 is the lightest, weighing in at 12 and 3 quarter pounds. The power plant is a KVB 72. Carl came in 22nd. We campaigned this aircraft in. We have two F 86s airborne burning up the sky. Here's up and down hail. Yeah. Being collapsed. Operating gun tails? Exactly. As they are on the whole side of the aircraft. Aircraft in miniature. Mr. Hip is back on the ground. Built from a SIG kit, the Spacewalker II was built by Dick Skoglin from Lancaster, California. The colorful aircraft weighs 12 pounds and is powered by a Super Tiger 92 stroke. Final entry is an F-16 constructed from a Byron kit by David Kephart of Bend, Oregon. The aircraft is marked for an Oregon National Guard F-16 based at Klamath Falls. It weighs a light 11 pounds and uses a Rossi 91 for power. David was having problems getting the engine to run right and as a result this very nice F-16 did not perform up to its potential. Here we are on Sunday afternoon getting ready for the awards presentations.
If you can't make out what Sam Wright is holding in his hand, it's a new award to be given out annually, the Master Buns Award. And this year's winner is Lee Rice. By the way, a secret committee composed of contestants' wives decides on the winners for this category. Another special award was given to Gene Barton as the most consistent pilot at the Masters. And here we go, starting with 10th place with a score of 181.167, Charlie Nelson. With a score of 182.083, ninth place was won by Eugene Job with a zero. Lee Rice, Mr. Top Buns, placed eighth. His score was 182.500. Seventh place was won by Jeff Foley with a score of 183.500. Tom Polapink won sixth place with a sop with snipe. His score was 183.750. And Diego Lopez, contest director extraordinaire, came in fifth place with a score of 186.417. Fourth place was earned by Shalish Patel with a score of 187.833. In third place, the most improved pilot at the Masters, Gene Barton. His score was 187.917. It's interesting to note that less than nine one hundredths of a point separated fourth place from third. Terry Nitsch flying his beautiful F-86 placed second with the score of 188.750. And with a score of 190.750, flying his beautiful Lear 35, from Big Rock, Illinois, Mr. Scale Masters, 1993, Dennis Crooks. Gene, congratulations. Thank you. Thank How you. long has it been? Uh, matter of fact, third place uh, was in Fort, Fort Knox, Kentucky. 1988. You remember, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was well deserved. You, yeah. you, you flew Rock City this mm -hmm. weekend, and I don't think uh, anybody would argue. What? Uh, well, you got another award uh, just uh, today during the uh, presentations. They, they created a new one. I guess it's uh, for most consistent flying. Uh, well, you certainly did that. I guess they added all the scores up and whoever has the most bananas wins. So, well, once I'm, again. I'm the biggest monkey. I guess. You're the biggest, the biggest monkey. Once again, congratulations. Thank you. I, we had a good time. This was the best. Yeah. Terry and Sheila, congratulations. How do you feel? Oh, great. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We didn't repeat, but 
uh, just tickled to be here, tickled to be where I am. Uh, I don't know if anybody will ever repeat in this thing. The competition's so tough, and the guys are so good that uh, yeah, it's a bear. Yeah, it's, a, it's bear. a bear. It's a bear. Nobody's done it yet. Hmm? No, and I can, you know, it's an understandable. <laughs> Man, this is tough. It really is. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Okay. I appreciate it, and best of luck for the next year. Thank you. We'll see you next year. You bet. Dennis and Linda, congratulations for an excellent performance and a well-deserved first place. How do uh, you feel about it right now? Oh, this is this has been incredible. You know, you, you work. Oh, we've been uh, doing the scale masters, I guess, for what uh, eight years or longer. At least that long. We, we've not At been least to, that long. We've not been to every one, uh, not by choice. But you know, when airplanes get broken, you know, <laughs> it's not much fun to come to these things and just watch, watch. when, when yeah, you like exactly. to participate. But uh, it's been a long, hard road, and uh, we finally made it. Perseverance does pay off. And you, Linda, how you feel about it? Oh, I'm still in shock. <laughs> Uh, it, I think it's great. Uh, Dennis has worked so hard. I mean, I think I'm the only one that knows just how much he wanted to win the Masters. And the fact that he did it, I couldn't be happier. Well, he's accomplished it. He's accomplished it. To both of you, congratulations. Thank you, Warner. Uh, this has been uh, not exactly a lifelong dream, but uh, it's been a dream for a long time. We so finally awesome. pulled it off. With Dennis and Linda Crooks for Prop Wash Video, I'm Warner Cop. Those magnificent men in their flying machines.